Hi, in this, uh, um, in this video we'll see how to integrate CSE with Sentinel-1 and how constant integrity checks of the clients will prevent us from accessing resources when a device is infected with a virus. So let's get to it. Hmm. The first thing we need to do from the CSE console is go to integrations within the trust menu. Here we add a new integration. For now we have CrowdStrike and Sentinel-1 available. We'll add other antivirus engines later. Let's give it a name. Capture Client Depth Integration. We select a partner, in this case Sentinel-1, and input the credentials, the API endpoint, which you can find in the documentation, and the API key. We get the API key from our Masoni Wall account, Let's log into it. And from there, we access the Capture Client Console. This Capture Client Console doesn't need to be in the same tenant, in fact, mine isn't. So let's access the Capture Client Console. At the top right, we find the option to generate a token for Sentinel-1. Here we have the token. As it says, this is the only time we'll see it. We copy it and paste it in the CS console. We add the integration. Once it's added, the system will automatically create two trust factors that we'll see now. Let's refresh. Moving to another directory, Let's go to the directory menu where we'll later create a user. That's going to be the user we have to test this. And then come back to integrations created as EDR type. And we see two trust factors created. Let's create a new role. That will be for users who are using Capture Client. Not all my users use it. So we might want to create these roles only for certain users. We click on the Add Group button and create a new group called Capture Client Users. We select and save. The next thing we'll do is invite a new user. In this case, the user's name will be Joe, and the email address is joe at sonicspain.net, which is mine. So we type there. The domain sonicspain.net, and in the roles we... We assign the capture client inserts. We add the user, and as we saw in the first video, this sends us an invitation. While the email is being sent to the user, we will download, we have downloaded the CSE application from Banyan, and here it is. It's version 3.2. We run it as administrator because this is a logged in user on a machine. And he does not have access privileges. Notice that I am on that machine via RDP, which is called client tree. We install Banyan. Uh, while the installation finishes, the system is sending us an email with the invitation. So we're giving it time to arrive. What it will ask us for later is the invitation code to add us to the organization. It will also send us an email account and a temporary password that we will need to change at the first login. This is the usual onboarding, the one we saw in the first video. And here we have the application already installed, waiting for us to register. So let's open the access to load web access for this user. And here in the inbox, we have the welcome email with the details. Here we are interested in the invitation code and the password. 
we click on register. Enter the authentication code, the invitation. Sonicspain.net continue and the web page opens where we need to enter our credentials. It's jasonicspain.net and the temporary password that was sent to us. As we saw, the first thing we need to do is reset this password. It's not considered secure. From there we change it and see how it logs us in. And the application is asking us to register the devices. Uh, in this case, we say it's a dedicated corporate device. Here we have several options to choose from. These options could later be changed by the user themselves. And we have this visibility. In this case, we will mark it as a corporate user or device. Here we see the logged in user. And as we have seen, we can connect to the same resources as NSM. Uh, and via RDP, we can connect with the tunnel established to a remote desktop. Uh, for this demonstration, I have modified access to that remote desktop. It is another host just so we can log in. We see the trust level as high and we see capture client here, which wasn't there before. Now the CSE console knows we have this installed. And since there are no threats, Joe from sonicspain.net has a high trust level. We are getting the service tunnel up and running. And while it's coming up, we're going to start the RDP client to connect to this new virtual machine. 172.16.254.1 We click on connect and now we're going to log in. And we'll leave it to the site for now. So we can see how it behaves. Now we are going to download a real virus. In the capture client policy, I have changed the threat protection from protect, kill and quarantine to just detect. If we protect and quarantine from the capture client's perspective, we are not infected. Therefore, the device's trust level won't change because it's remedied. Uh, we need to keep the virus on the device. Let's download this file. Uh, we show it in the folder and before opening it, we are going to make a change to the policies associated with this user. This is in the default trust policy and in the factors. We are going to change this to always deny in case an active threat is found. Otherwise, it just lowers our score. And that won't always get us kicked out. In this case, we do want it to happen. The file has a password, we enter it, and once it's done, unzip. Capture client detects it almost immediately. Okay, here we see how the client has turned red, because a threat has been detected. And what is happening in the background is that the capture client console is notifying the console of CSE that, well, this anomaly has been detected. We're going to force this and refresh the status. Here it is. The non-active threat detection has been detected or denied. And what happens now is that we are no longer welcome. And we'll see how without doing anything, RDP itself has to notice it. There it is. It has interrupted and killed our connection. From this moment, it's as if we weren't connected to any links unless we set up remediation links, which is what we are going to do now. We have entered the capture client console, and here we see that this device, client four, with Joe logged in, has a 
thread. We see here what the file is and what we're going to do is kill the process and put it in quarantine. We approve the actions and we'll see how from the console's point of view the device is no longer infected. If we return to the virtual machine where we're running this and refresh, it turns green again. Uh, and if we have time, we'll see that the RDP client automatically re-establishes the connection simply because the RDP client is constantly retrying. And there it is. We've re-established the connection and can work normally. Also, Obviously, the Capture Client Console itself, or the part the end user sees, is already green. We have statistics for all these accesses in the Events section. Here we see the trust levels that have dropped. And in red, the log entries showing the failure. Well, that's all for today. As always, thank you very much, and I hope it was interesting.